Welcome to Northwest Florida State College Outlook. NWF is committed to providing students with opportunity to meet their educational goals and to helping them achieve success. Our mission is our students, helping each person who comes through our doors to achieve their individual goals for education and career attainment. Welcome to Northwest Florida State College Outlook. My name's Devin Stevenson, president of the college, and it is my honor to be hosting today's program. On the program today, we have Ramsey Ross, the uh, athletic director for our fine Doolittle Raiders athletic teams, as well as Jeanette Shires, director of our Maddie Kelly Art Center. And today she's gonna talk about our upcoming shows. So joining me for our first segment is Ramsey Ross. Ramsey, welcome to the show. Dr. Stevenson, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you very much for the opportunity to have me. Well, it's, it's also wonderful to be sitting on this court, uh, a court that is home to national champions, uh, to great athletic directors like Mickey Inglet, yourself and others, great coaches. Uh, this is the finest, in my opinion, uh, JUCO athletic facility in the country and to be sitting here and doing this first show here is a great honor for me. Absolutely, you know, it's, we're very fortunate to have a facility like this. We love showcasing it, but you know, uh, we're even as proud as we are as the facility, we're even more proud of the product we put on the floor. It's great to see this level of competition in the Panhandle Conference and in Region 8, but I'd like for you to talk a little bit about how our teams are doing right now. Uh, I know that we've got polls out, rankings are out, uh, our coach and player recognitions are coming now. So could you talk a little bit about that to our, to our audience? I would love to. Uh, so we're, here we are, we sit in middle of December and we haven't lost a game for the 2017-18 athletic season. So, so the best is our standard, Absolutely, right? and uh, we, we certainly can't get off to a better start than what we've done so far. Uh, our men's program is currently ranked number one in the country. Uh, again, can't get much better than that. Nope. Uh, and uh, received all the first place votes in the latest poll. Uh, they have gotten off to a fantastic start, played a very challenging schedule. Uh, I think we've played uh, four or five teams that have been ranked uh, and won all of those pretty handily. So uh, I've gotten off to a fantastic start in men's basketball uh, and it's a fun product to watch. Boy, it's a really exciting group to, and uh, it's definitely worth the price of admission, if not more. Our women's team has really made a transformation from the previous uh, year. Um, it's a very uh, cohesive, well-coached unit that plays well together. Um, and I wouldn't say we have a superstar, but boy, did they really get after it. Uh, this gym, this arena will be filled with fans. Uh, a lot of snowbirds attend. I'd like for you to tell our TV audience what we can expect from our basketball teams this year in a very competitive conference, a very competitive region, the largest region, I believe, in NJCAA. What, uh, what can they expect to see? Well, Dr. Stevenson, uh, as an Alabama fan, uh, okay. I, I, I like to kind of, uh, you know, basically uh, parallel our conference to the SEC in football. Uh, our Panhandle Conference, uh, our league is the best in the country. And uh, I think it's evidence of that four of, uh, out of our teams, uh, four of our five teams currently in men's basketball are ranked in the national poll. That's incredible. That's incredible. Uh, and so you can expect, the fans can expect a gauntlet uh, when they come through here, uh, high level competition. Uh, you're looking at um, power five division one type talent that's gonna come in here on, on a nightly basis. On the women's side, I believe all of our teams are currently in the national poll. Uh, we currently sit at six, Gulf Coast is one. Uh, Tallahassee is at two or three, or, or three or four. Right. Uh, I mean, it's amazing how, how uh, the, the quality and the high level of play. Uh, fans also, when they come here in conference play, they'll get to enjoy the pet band. It really brings a great, a great collegiate feel to the environment. Uh, kids enjoy it. Uh, it's a great family event. Uh, kids can run around the concourse and, and, and you know, partake in the, in the band and all the festivities. It's just a really fun environment uh, that I encourage all of, uh, all of our fans to come and see. I, I certainly agree with you. It, it, uh, it's a blast to come here and see the enthusiasm. 
can't forget our cheerleaders who do a great job rallying. We have a, a great pep band uh, that, that'll be playing from Niceville High School. It's an event. Uh, it's one of the best I've seen. And with the addition of some of our uh, digital projection, uh, it's, it's going to really be an enhanced event for everybody as we move into the winter, winter season. So I'm sure there are some returning stars on some of our teams that are coming back from last year. And I'd like for you to talk just a little bit about those stars. Uh, and I, I hate to use that term stars, but, but they really are. They're the, when people come, they say, you got to watch Andre Felice or DJ Funderburk or Chris Duarte. you got to watch those kids. They're phenomenal. So tell us about them. Well, uh, I think one of the most exciting things about both of our teams is really we have a lot of stars. Um, I don't, you know, I'm reluctant to single one or two out simply because I think that's what made us so, has made us so successful is because we are a very cohesive. Both teams are very cohesive uh, in how they play. Um, it, you never know who's going to go off for 20 or 25, which is something yeah. as an opposing coach, I think would have, you know, give you a lot of nightmares. Uh, but um, if you do want to single out, I mean, you really got to uh, look at Andreas Feliz, who's a returner from last year, uh, arguably the best point guard of the country, uh, has really elevated his game um, and is just a fantastic player and a great kid. Uh, and I shouldn't say a kid, a, a great young man. A great young man. Um, he would probably take exception to that. So. <laughs> Uh, but we've got a great mix of transfers and some uh, an excellent, very exciting uh, freshman class on our men's side uh, that I'm really excited about. Of course, you mentioned Funder Burke, who's in a transfer from Ohio State, uh, and others. Uh, I should mention Trey Boyd uh, and Kelvin Robinson. Uh, those two are transfers as well that have really made an instant impact. And Kareem Ezzedin, uh who's really uh, elevated his game as well. So uh, really, really excited about where they are. They're a fun group to watch. They share the ball. Anybody who's a big basketball fan, uh, who really watches the Golden State Warriors, how they share the ball yeah. and the ball never sticks. That's kind of how they play and it's really exciting. Uh, on the women's side, Jay Lewis is our, is our biggest returner. Of course, Ashley Lee is, an, is our only other returner and she's really stepped up recently uh, as well. But we have a good mix of, um, we have a couple sophomore transfers, but we really have a lot of um, exciting international players. Um, um, if you look at our roster, you'd be shocked yeah. at how many international players we have but they're all outstanding so what do we young have, ladies. Sweden? We have Sweden, France, Bosnia, Bosnia. Russia, um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting one off, off the top of my head, but, um, and Great Britain. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's a really great, fun group to watch, and they all play well together, and uh, really excited to see how they do in January. Now the baseball and the softball team will really become active once the new year starts rolling in. Talk a little bit about the great work that Doug Martin and Jack Byerly do with our softball and baseball program. Well, you know, this is the quiet season, but the work never stops. Uh, you know, starting in August, these teams have ratcheted up uh, in fall, fall ball and really had successful seasons. Uh, you know, Coach Martin is always, uh, you know, reluctant to give his team a lot of praise in the fall. And when he gave me a few compliments about his team, I really took that as, wow, we must <laughs> yes. be pretty good. <laughs> yes. Because a typical coach isn't really going to sing their praises early on. But I think he really likes his group. We're going to add a couple transfers here at the break that we're really excited about. And, of course, softball, um, Jack has a completely, almost a whole new roster, with the exception of one or two. Uh, you know, a lot of new faces, a lot of new enthusiasm, uh, very, very high-level talent. Um, he's got a lot of freshmen uh, he's having a mold uh, and they they took um, a lot of learning experiences this fall but he's really excited about what they have in store in the spring. So we're, we're talking about advancing uh, our not only our programs but our facilities and we've just done some major work uh, around the campus to open up the campus from College Boulevard and when we did that the coaches came to me and said look uh, now folks can see us from the road. We'd really like to enhance the fencing. And we did a major fencing addition uh, at the college for baseball and softball. And it looks really good, but the real neat thing that we're doing right now is we're in the middle of uh, a partnership with the Northwest Florida State College Foundation to raise money for a new indoor practice facility, what I call a skills development facility, uh, and what some may know as an indoor hitting and batting facility, but it'll be much more than that. Um, and so I, I want you to talk a little bit about it because we're very connected with the community and this will not only be used by our teams, but it'll be used by the community. So talk a little bit about sort of where we are with that and, and where we plan to go with it. Well, Dr. Stevenson, this has uh, been a, a dream of ours for many, many years. 
uh, but it's just been that. It's just been a dream. But now that we've actually launched this campaign, it's actually becoming reality and we cannot contain our excitement. Um, it's just, uh, it's really taken off. It's still almost in its infancy stage. Uh, we're really starting to kind of hit the ground. We just had a, an important luncheon uh, a couple weeks ago that, were, that really was successful. Um, but the need for this can't be understated. Uh, you know, really right now, our, our young men and women are probably rained out about 45 days out of the year. Like today? Like today, <laughs> exactly. They're not getting any work done today. Or um, yesterday. Or, or yesterday. So, and actually, as we all know, the rainiest time of year is in the spring. Mm -hmm. And that's when we're playing conference season. So we can't afford to miss any practices. And, and we sell these kids on coming down here to improve and get a, be a better player, a better student, and a better person. And uh, if we can't provide them the resources to do that when it's inclement weather, that, that hinders us. I should say also that I think one of the reasons why our basketball teams have been so successful is that they have access to the arena at any time that they want. True. And uh, you know, that's a major factor. We don't share it with volleyball or anything like that. And so the fact that they can get in there after hours uh, at night to take a few more swings or, or work on their, uh, on, get another bullpen session or whatever, that's huge. Uh, and you mentioned the community piece. I mean, right now, nothing like that exists in, in our, in our uh, service area. And so to provide that for, for the local community would be an outstanding piece as well. So, you, sp you spoke about the community. Can you talk a little bit about how the community could be involved in helping support this facility? I know that we've had a number of donations already for the uh, indoor facility for baseball and softball but we're less than half way through right now. So, um, I mean, that, that we have remaining. Uh, we've raised more than, more than half already, but it's critical now because we want to get this thing underway. How can the community support us? Uh, you know, every dollar is going to help. And so if anybody is interested in, in assisting us, they can contact myself on our website at nwfraiders.com or through the foundation at NWFSC Foundation uh, on, on, our, on their website. Um, you can reach out to Carla Reinley uh, or, our, or our coaches. Um, you know, we have a lot of different levels uh, that you can give, but really uh, anything would help and uh, it would go a long way in doing that. And uh, we've got a lot of people that are interested uh, and there's been a lot of chatter about it. We have a lot of momentum, but we're looking to continue uh, to pursue that and hopefully that momentum will turn into dollars. Got to push it over the edge Absolutely. until it becomes reality. Uh, and, and we're very thankful for the gifts that we already have, but we do need other people to step up to make this happen. So how can those that are watching this TV program today attend games or become a part of our very, very popular Raider Club program. I mean, I'm sitting here almost at center court looking up at the Raider Club section and I'm thinking, you know, there are a few seats still available. How can individuals become a part of our support group here? Dr. Stevenson, Raider, the Raider Club is the best deal in Northwest Florida. Uh, it's incredibly reasonable. It's 150 for a couple uh, and 200 for a family of four. And we'll work with you if you have more family members. Uh, but, you know, that not only gives you free admission to all of our games, not just basketball, but it also gives you uh, access to our hospitality room uh, in between games and at halftime, um, thanks to Danny's Fried Chicken and Marco's Pizza and other sponsors uh, that we have um, in that area. But um, and we Danny's also, Fried Chicken, it, the best red beans and rice. Oh, around. you can't beat I'm it. You can't it. beat it. And you got to have a little hot sauce. That's there right. Too, I agree but. with that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. And. In addition to that, we also give our Raider Club members a gift. And this year, it's a very nice red pullover. G that Judy has, showed mine this morning as yeah. I was getting ready. She said, now, don't forget, you've got this. We've yeah, got to wear it sometime. Absolutely, no doubt. And we've got a ton of compliments about that. And that's a yearly thing. We do a different gift every year. Uh, you know, and if, but if a fan um, doesn't, uh, isn't able to join the Raider Club, our, our price of admission is actually less than a high school game. It's $7 to get in for adults and $4 for children or K through 12. Uh, and, and pre-K is actually free. So uh, really, we don't charge admission to make money. We, we just charge admission just to get people in the door and, yep. and, 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 and show the value of coming here. But really, the, the important thing is we want to have community support exactly. and, and come out and, and support the, these fantastic student athletes who pour their heart and soul in representing our community and our college the best way possible. So you spoke uh, earlier about how well our students do academically. And I, I know we're wrapping up the segment, but I wanted to go right back to how we support our students academically. And you, you've got this thing down to a science now. 
And I'd like for the audience to know that for us, it's more than just athletics. It's more than just running the ball up and down or hitting it over the fence. Uh, it's making quality citizens out of our student athletes. And they have to have a good educational background to be able to do that. And, and we provide some really strong resources that help them get there. Talk about that. Okay, well, I'd be happy to. First and foremost, it starts with our outstanding faculty. Uh, our faculty is incredibly supportive of what we do here um, from an athletic standpoint. They understand the demands of our student athletes and, and they are very uh, willing to work with us uh, and, and, and provide our student athletes with the best instruction possible. Our, our faculty is outstanding. Uh, we have tutors uh, for math and English for our student athletes, which goes a long way. Those are the two subject areas that our students uh, struggle the most in. Uh, so we get outstanding support in that, in that area. We also have added cable and internet over at the, our, our student athlete housing so they can work. As you know, online instruction oh, is, yeah. a, is a gauntlet now. I mean, it's a, it's a powerhouse and that's kind of where the way is going. And so uh, you, you can't do anything unless you're online. And so the fact that we're providing those resources is great. We just added a, a, a beautiful lab, a computer lab for our softball team. Uh, and of course the Academic Success Center, our student athletes take advantage of that as well. So we have everything covered in that realm. Uh, we have a student athlete academic advisor who strictly, uh, Rachel Ryan does a great job of giving our student athletes a tailor-made schedule to fit within their parameters of their demands. And so uh, all those things work together. Student services have been outstanding for us. That's how it gets done. That's excellent. Ramsey, I wanna thank you for joining us today. My first segment, uh, hosting the program and it's been an honor to have you. Absolutely, thank you so much. Frank. You're welcome. In our next segment, we're gonna be traveling to the Maddie Kelly Arts Center and visiting with Jeanette Shires, the director, to talk about the upcoming shows right here on the campus of Northwest Florida State College. Stay tuned. Welcome back, I'm Devin Stevenson, president of Northwest Florida State College and we wanna welcome you to the second segment of our program today and we're in the beautiful Maddie Kelly Art Center on the second floor of the veranda here, and it's beautiful, uh, with our director, Jeanette Shires. Jeanette, welcome today. Thank you, Dr. Stevenson. It's great to be here. Wonderful. Well, I think most people know that this is a nationally recognized facility, and we bring national acts here. Uh, it's uh, a terrific uh, thing to be a part of this. In fact, one of the reasons that we were drawn to this institution is uh, because of the wonderful performing arts uh, which I get to participate in from time to time. Uh, and I'd like for you to share with our TV audience today some of the unique details uh, about the structure because it is really phenomenal. Okay, well, you know that we opened our doors in um, January of 1997, so it's been over 20 years, hard to believe. And the building that we're in right now, the main theater, is over 110,000 square feet. Wow. The stage itself was actually designed to do, to accommodate Phantom of the Opera. And we've had um, such stars here as Ben Vereen, Jerry Seinfeld, Jason Alexander, Ed Asner, Crystal Gale, and um, All-American Rejects, just to name a few. Wow. But I think one of the most unique features of the Maddie Kelly is the Seven Dancer statue. Um, Esther Wertheimer was the sculptor artist and um, she did an exquisite job. She um, aspired to be a dancer. She said herself that she couldn't be because she was too short. But um, she loved dance and that influenced her a lot in her work. And I think that also you'll see a, a constant theme with her sculpture that she likes to emphasize family. And what we love to see is families out there on show night taking a picture in front of the Seven Dancer oh, yeah. statue. It's just beautiful. It, it is really uh, a lovely thing. One of the most interesting things about it is the fact that when we interview uh, individuals that, and they'll come to my office and, and they'll say, I just had to go and get a picture made with the dancers. I, I've been amazed at how many people come to campus and that's the first thing they want to go to. So it certainly has that appeal, that yes. draw, and I think it's so appropriate for this theater that does such a phenomenal job bringing great talent uh, to this region. And I know we are sort of the cultural arts center for this region right here on the campus of Northwest Florida State College. What's interesting, I think, is the way that you embed students into the productions. Uh, we see them when we have a, a huge Broadway show, they're, they, they're filling the stage, they're learning. Uh, when we're doing our own performances, they're backstage working. Talk a little bit about that unique 
uh, blending of the student talents into the work that you do here at Maddie Kelly. Okay. Well, really, Dr. Stevenson, we couldn't do it without the, with the, the students. They are an incredible asset to us. Um, our scholarship students are required to, to work on two Broadway shows a year. Wow. So, and some of the contracts for the shows that we bring in actually call for 60 people at least, sometimes 60 or more people. And that's like all hands on deck. So we need the students, we really need them. So they sign up with our staffing, staffing um, company and they work alongside the industry professionals. They'll help with unloading the, the uh, trucks, the tractor trailers, to pushing, pushing boxes, uh, carpentry, electronics, electrics, lights, wardrobe, makeup, wigs, just all aspects of theater. So they get some hands-on experience. And even if they don't go into that line of work per se, it just gives them perspective, different perspective when they go to see a show, you know, somewhere else or here for that matter. They're very enthusiastic about yes. the work they do, very passionate about it. So if we transcend a little bit from internal, from our students, and faculty, we know that there are community members as well that are involved in our programs. Uh, you, you see them when you walk in the door, uh, our ushers. But if you will, tell, tell the, the TV audience a little bit about how uh, community members can get involved with the Maddie Kelly Arts Center. Well, all of our auditions are open auditions. They're open to community members and the students themselves. And, and like you said, um, People can help with the building of the sets, the painting of the sets, and, and also in performing in the productions that we do, and, and also ushering or becoming a docent at the art gallery. So there's different ways to, to get involved here, and we're always re receptive of that. Excellent. So will there be an artist series here at the Maddie Kelly Art Center this year? I get asked that a lot. I'm glad you asked because yeah. yes, we do. We're gonna um, have um, MJ Live, the Michael Jackson tribute, come back again. He was here about two years ago and he's a phenomenal entertainer. He's just as good on, on stage as he is off because he interacts with, with all, of the, all of the audience. I was out in the community about three weeks ago and uh, with a group of individuals and began telling them a little bit about that and someone asked if we would ever get MJ Live back because they came to a performance you had a few years ago right. and they were so impressed they said we are definitely coming back. Super, yeah. I love to hear that because yeah. people want to see it again. We also have um, on the artist series Catapult which is a show oh. with shadows and silhouettes and they do um, some acrobatics and kind of tell a story with humor. They were on America's Got Talent? Yes they or? were, they certainly were. We have um, Hotel California which is of course a tribute to the Eagles and um, sing -along, a Grease sing-along is actually, this is something new. We've never done a sing-along before. Oh, wow. Something we've always like wanted karaoke? to do. Well, I won't go that far, but you won't have to get up on stage. Okay, you good. can sing from, your, from the comfort of your seat in the audience. That's a good thing. But the Grease sing-along is going to feature our sound stations, our own show choir. Oh. And also there'll be a guest MC who's a top secret we can't talk about just yet. So that's going to be a real surprise. Wow. So we've got quite, quite the uh, artist series as well this year. Okay, so Jeanette, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking you've got a lot of diversity in these shows. Uh, they appeal to all ages, uh, their quality. How do you select these shows every year, the, the shows that you're bringing to the Emerald Coast, to the Maddie Kelly Art Center? How do you select them? Well, I'm lucky to attend two different conferences a year. The one is in the southeast region of the United States called Performing Arts Exchange. And that's where we kind of lay the, lay the groundwork and see what's actually touring. Sometimes the agents will ask us to hold weeks of different places in the calendar. And then in January, I go to APAP, which is held in New York City, and that's the big one. And that's where things are get firmed up, then they can hold just particular dates. Now APAP is? It stands for Association of Performing Arts Presenters. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's the big one, and that's where things get nailed down and firmed up. So that's where you find all the talent and what's out there. So you're actually selecting the talent and booking it sometimes over a year before Definitely. they even come. Yes, we're doing 18, 19. So it'll have to be a profit in that way to pick the shows you think are going to really draw exactly. and do well. Exactly, you have to have some foresight. You, you do a sure. great job Well, thank you, that. thank you. I, and I have help. I bounce things off my colleagues, and, sure. and ordinarily I'll take someone with me to help. So it takes, it takes a village, it oh, certainly absolutely. isn't just one person. So I know that the entire arts culture of this college is not only centered around um, the performing arts, but the fine arts as well. Just a, a really mixed bag that covers a lot of different skill sets. One of the things that we also do here is play host to the Northwest Florida Symphony Orchestra and our maestro, Jeffrey Link, Rink, who is just absolutely super. 
And if you could tell us a little bit about what the NFSO has planned for this season. Okay. Well, Maestro Rink does have some exciting things on tap for, for the beginning of 2018. In February, he's going to do Cirque de la Symphony. And that'll be actual Cirque performers on silks and different, uh, yes. And they will be actually performing right above the symphony musicians. It's something to be seen. It's absolutely incredible. And then he's also planning a, an opera, La Traviata, he's doing oh, yeah. in March 14th, yeah. March 14th that evening. That's something we don't do every year, so that's very exciting. And then he will finish his season with the Stars of Tomorrow, which um, the winners of the concerto competition, and usually there's three, three divisions and three winners, and they perform with the symphony orchestra as well. And it's ex so exciting to see the youth perform, you know, with the professional orchestra. It's, it's great, and we get a lot of children that come to that one as well. So with all of the activities that are going on, I know um, tonight uh, here at the uh, center, we have a sold out show. There's a lot of demand for different shows that are going on. How do people purchase tickets? And are there group rates for some of the shows that we offer? There's actually three different ways that you can purchase. Some people still like to come up and test their seat out before they buy their ticket. So they'll come to the box office. And you can also call, we're open Monday through Friday, 10 to four, and 90 minutes prior to show, and then you can go online. But something that we do offer this year is a print at home. So you can print your ticket at home on your oh. printer, or you can print it to your device and show up with your phone, and we can scan you in. Well, Jeanette, you do a great job here. You. you make us very proud, and we're extremely pleased with the work that goes on and the connectivity. Uh, you know, one of the things that our institution really strives for is connecting with the community. We can't look at ourselves as just an institution that sits on 264 acres in Niceville and expect people to come to us. We, we have to go out and, and promote and be engaged in the community in some formidable way. And I do believe that's what has created such a buzz and such interest is because we're involved and we provide programs that enrich this community. And of course, there's none better than the work that goes on here at the Maddie Kelly Arts Center. So thank you for your good work. Thank and the, you. Your fabulous staff that are so accommodating Wonderful staff. and dedicated. Yes. yes, they are, they are fabulous. And we could not do it, you are right, without the community that we serve. Right. Yeah. Well, that wraps up our show today. I want to thank Ramsey Ross, as well as Jeanette Shires for coming on uh, today for Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Uh, we are excited about the future at the college. We have a great new strategic plan, lots of good things happening, and we want you to stay tuned to the good things that are happening here. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Our mission is our students, helping each person who comes through our doors to achieve their individual goals for educational and career attainment. Improve your life today at Northwest Florida State College.